Hello everyone. Just taking a little time to breathe. <sighs> For people to check in. I'm learning now that it takes a few moments. So I'm going to take that time to take some deep breaths. So if you're with me, <laughs> I'm inviting you to take a couple of breaths too. Just breathing. And maybe you want to do what I'm doing, which is breathing in and observing what's going on in my body, telling myself it's fully okay to feel all this that I'm feeling. So breathing in, just feeling whatever is present. And breathing out, sinking deeper into it. Breathing in, just observing, seeing if I can make space for everything that's here. Breathing out, going even deeper. Just checking in with myself if there is anything I'm trying to not feel. If there is anything I'm resisting, which can be so subtle, so subtle. All these things I can deal with, but what's more? What else is there? You know, beyond... The first layer of emotional reaction. What's underneath? <sighs> What's underneath? There's always this first layer of response of reacting to an external situation based on our past experiences in life. And we always think it's about this moment, that our reaction has everything to do with this moment but most of the time it hasn't. It has everything to do with all the moments before, especially those moments a long time ago, which we then project onto the current situation. So beyond this first response of, often for me comes from the head that wants to point that way. What's beyond that? What does the belly say? What does the heart say? What does the womb say? <laughs> what do other parts say? What does your liver say? Or your spleen? What's happening there? <sighs> so this basically has been what I've been doing the past days. <laughs> Checking in with myself. Taking care of my kids. And staying away from the rest of the world <laughs> being very close to but it's not fully true I've been checking in with friends so tuning in to what I want to say when you tumble down that rabbit hole of conscious exploration there's no way back and all of you who are in this process who live this life will smile internally right now or be like, yeah, fuck, fuck, that's true. And it's, so I'm being called now by someone to see if I can ignore that. Um, because once you go down that rabbit hole, once you start exploring yourself, once you start going deeper, you know when you're escaping it, you know when you're avoiding the real truth of the moment. And then when there's no way back, the only way is deeper, deeper into that rabbit hole. And there are things and situations and people in your life that can speed up that process, who can help you go deeper. And close relationships, to me, those are like the highest level <laughs> going deeper. Your parents, siblings, kids, partners. And if you want to go really fucking deep and challenge yourself to the max, <laughs> I advise you to start doing a practice of relating, which is beyond paradigms, which is not like the monogamous version of relating, but more open. Because I can tell you my experience of the past five years has been that everything you try to hide, everything is going to come up. 
And it's, it's a good thing if you treat it well. <laughs> because if you don't, it's going to hurt you. And even if you treat it well, it's going to hurt you. And those who know me have heard me saying this many times, but we all have this comfort zone. And these images on the web, they say that magic happens there. It's not true. This is where re-traumatizing happens. And when you go there, you run back in and your comfort zone will shrink. But if you are just outside your comfort zone, if the comfort zone is there, this is where growth happens. This is the expansion zone. But if you go too far out, it's not going to help. So for me, choosing to be again in a non-traditional, non-monogamous relationship, the invitation I give myself is to find that sweet spot where there is enough freedom to explore and enough challenge to go deeper, but with enough safety to be able to open. So to find that sweet spot between challenge and safety. And it's a thing that is moving. It's not a strict, it's not a, fo a fixed place. Because if, while well, we grow in life, and when we have different people coming in and out of our lives, they feel different, we are different. Different part of the cycle, different phase of the moon, different whatever it is that makes that spot changeable, not fixed. With that, I am one of those people who has a lot of trouble feeling their desires. I have a fear of being too much. I have a fear of being too little. I have a fear of being manipulative. I have a fear of being a victim. I have a big fear of not being evolved enough in the situation. I have a fear of making drama. And I can go on for a while. Also, I never learned as a kid to express my desires. On the contrary, I was taught to, you know, be modest, not to ask for too much or be quiet. <laughs> so I never learned to express my desires. And I'm in the process for some years now um, of learning to express my desires. And now I'm with a partner, with my primary partner, who is inviting me to do that. So with that, we've created like a safe container, uh, a set of agreements and rules that we created to create that safety, to feel safe enough to go through the challenges. But of course, we just met and situations change and I'm not great at feeling my desires. So of course, calibration is needed. Of course, things happen that hurt, that challenge. And I often only realize um, afterwards. And what I've learned this week is that even more difficult than finding desires and stating them is finding boundaries and stating them. Because boundaries, ooh, I have also a fear of abandonment. So if I would have a boundary, wouldn't that make him run right away? Because I ask him to slow down, wouldn't that like danger danger so i'm and i have had some bad experiences in the past as well where i did express boundaries and where i was um told off told to be manipulated for example so even more than stating uh desires boundaries are a challenge so <laughs> I learned now that boundaries are actually a desire, <laughs> maybe a desire of something you don't want. But if I can turn them around in my head that they are a desire, I can actually get access to them more easy. But learning this was quite a tough lesson where I felt very, very triggered <laughs> for the last days, the last three days. Um, as in where I realized where something happened, where my partner had desires that for me were red. <laughs> red means trauma zone. Red means so far out of my comfort zone that my system, my head was like, hey, I should be able to deal with this. Hey, this should be okay. But my whole system was and still is actually in complete terror mode. So shaking, contracting, feeling a, my, my belly like, 
big pressure on my heart, big <clears throat> in my throat and even my tongue, like this whole area was like, oh, like um, squeezed, feeling like choking. Couldn't stop crying. Especially the times I was contacting him, it was like, <gasps> I cried a lot. So um, what I did was reaching out to uh, friends, to my sisters, my sister group, and um, other women to keep sharing with my partner how I felt where I was to not disconnect from him because that's the tendency I have in those situations to run, to fully step out of the con con connection, like even wanting to stop the whole relationship because I felt so afraid. And so I reached out to sisters, to a whole bunch of them, <laughs> right, maybe 10, <laughs> my sister group and some others. And I asked them like, hey, this is the situation. This is how I feel. What do you think I should do? Because I know that I have blind spots here. I know that I don't know what to do because my system is contracted. The only thing I want to do is run. What to do? <laughs> Help. <laughs> I cannot do this on my own, which is what I would do in the past. I would do it all on my own. So I reached out and they told me like, girl, where are your boundaries? Can you explain them? Can you share them? Can you share your boundaries? And then give him an option, give him a choice, give him space to answer his way. And then you can do the next step. Just wait for his answer and then see how that feels and see where you go from there. So this is actually the point where I am now. Like today I could feel the boundaries that I have, which was actually a request for slowing down, which is to me, it's, it's, it was, Hmm. It was quite out of my comfort zone or quite challenging to express that. So, uh, and I felt very clearly that that was exactly what I needed to do to share how I feel, share my boundaries, share my desires, slowing down and to own them, to not make that from a victim position, to not make that from any kind of manipulative desire but to feel like hey my system is in red my system needs some safety can we please create uh, a container can we please create a reality where I can relax and where my system can relax and then let's talk again because when I'm discontracted I cannot really talk I cannot really share who I am with you because I'm in panic mode so that's what I did and sharing the desire, sharing my truth already changed a lot. If not, I could not have done this video right now. I would, uh, <laughs> I would be uh, probably working my ass off to find some distraction in between listening to my emotions and crying and talking with friends. So I felt when I said it, the moment I said it, I was crying. I said, hey, this is what I need. And I felt for the first time in a few days, I felt my heart warm, becoming warm. I felt my belly buzzing. And it was like, yeah, this is, this is my truth. This is my responsibility to share. And this is what I can do. I'm not forcing you to do anything. I'm not trying to change you. This is my truth. And he received it and said, thank you, and said, oh, let's get back to it. So that, that's, where, that's where we are right now. <laughs> For some reason, I really felt I wanted to share this with you now. Um, to not just share, you know, the polished, finished parts of processes. And it's all like good and well and beautiful and shiny. And woo, let's all have these relationships beyond paradigms because it's not all shiny and beautiful. Sometimes it's like messy and rough and painful and like, oh, fuck, what to do? And I'm still pretty much, still pretty much in the rough part. <laughs> let's say it that way. I'm still in the rough part. I feel very wobbly. I feel like my knees are shaking. I'm still cold all day. And I'm still insecure. I still like I'm not fully independent of his answer. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. And um, 
So I have no idea where it goes from here, to be very honest. But I do feel that the most beautiful thing I can give myself to give myself more safety is this, sharing my truth, sharing my full raw truth with the other person. Even when I'm scared that I'll chase them away, even when I'm scared uh, they're not going to like it, even when they're so close as my partner, who I love very much, and that my inner fearful child, she is convinced he will run. She's convinced he will. Now he will think I'm too much. Now this will be a step too far. Now it's this time it's different. This time will be, ah, <laughs> but I got to do this. I got to share my truth because if I don't, I will keep pushing myself. I will keep pushing myself over my own limits. And that's how I re-traumatize myself. And I've done that in the past. I've done that many times. And that's probably why my response now is so strong that I go to in full panic mode when I feel triggered. So um, I'm, this is my process of turning it around, of trying to teach myself something different, creating a different reality. So it's what I wanted to share with you today. And now I promised myself some ice cream. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do now. <sighs> Wishing you a beautiful night. Mm-hmm.